What's up guys, Dad Dash here, and I'm coming to you with another video today. I wanted to talk to you about an important topic, important subject matter, that I think is very important for all gig business operators to keep in mind. Now, listen, I am a big, big fan of every, uh, of the gig world out here, of everybody putting the, putting the reel out, right? Putting out information, putting out stuff. Um, and uh, I like it, right? I really do. I enjoy watching those videos. However, I do want to remind everybody of something. When you're watching videos, especially when you're watching videos that are talking about base pay, talking about order size, talking about, you know, what these apps are offering us. Listen, it. I want to be clear on something and, 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 and when I say what I'm about to say. Number one, I am not apologizing nor suggesting it's okay that an app pay anybody $2 uh, or less, even $2.25. The base pay that we're getting paid by DoorDash, by a lot of these apps, Grubhub, Uber Eats, the race to the bottom that we've seen in base pay is absolutely a problem. And it's something that should be addressed. What I'm saying is, is, is until we address it properly and approach it properly, and until we make the right points, it will never be addressed. Now, what I'm suggesting be done about this is number one, ignore it, okay? Because as long as you do what I tell you to do, right? As long as you're working, and again, I cannot stress this enough, as long as you know your value, and knowing your value, I mean, in reality, okay? Because I'm not wanting to exclude anybody that decides they want to take every order. That's valuable to them. I don't think it will be in the long run, and I think, hey, when they get frustrated, I hope that they're still listening and they're here, because we've included them under the big umbrella, they might try something different. And if it still works for them and makes them money and lets them reach their goals, I have at it, right? Because value is different for everyone. But I believe in the long run, value is truly a number. It comes down to your numbers at the end of the day, end of the week, end of the month, and end of the year. But I believe no one is going to be able to reach those numbers on a long-term, consistent fashion if you are not um, if you are not paying attention to making sure that you're only taking orders of value, and what does that mean? That means making sure that the dollar amount of an order covers your expenses and covers what you're putting into it. And what you're putting into it is labor, you're running your vehicle, you're making an investment in that order. And the idea behind the whole process is, is that you're going to invest your time, money, and resources into a particular order and that you're going to get what you're going to get back out of that order is going to make you money. In other words, you're going to make money above and beyond that. So the $10 that you accept an order at, you're not making $10. And so many people have stressed this because it feels like sometimes people forget this, this fact. Um, so it's really about at the end of that order, what have you really made? And if you're not looking at that fact, if you're not looking at that figure um, and taking that into account when you're making decisions, I think you're gonna lose, you, you're not gonna make as much money. You're gonna have bigger expenses. You're gonna have bigger problems at the end of the year. Um, particular things that you may not see right away, but you will see it when your car breaks down and you don't have the funds to take care of it. When you need to get gas and, you're, and you have no money because of it. These things will come and confront you eventually. And they will confront you uh, sometimes all at once. And if you're not preparing for this along the way, then you're, it'll put you out of business, right? And that's what the whole deal is. So if you're taking orders of value, right? and you're taking orders that are gonna give you a profit, in other words, that you can cash flow out of, so that when you take out your, your, your car expense, or what we call car maintenance, like your actual physical car maintenance, figure out what you need to set aside, and then continue to keep track of that and fluctuate it. I'm at 10 cents a mile. That's what I believe has gotten me what I need. Um, and, I, and I only am able to come to these numbers by keeping track on a running basis of what I'm putting into my car, and then transposing that over the miles that I'm working and then getting a mileage figure that I can then use on each order 
based on this is what it's costing me. If I've got eight, $900 on a rolling 12 month period into that car and I've driven X amount of miles over that rolling 12 month period, and then this is the amount, it's gonna go up or down or it should stay relatively static. For me, it stayed relatively static, which tells me 10 cents is where I was at. I started at seven and it rose a little bit because I was hoping with a Prius it would be there. Now that's not taking gas into account because again, a rolling 12 month period, I'm rolling my gas into a chart. I've been keeping track of it for the last 12 months. July will be the full 12 months. And then what'll happen is, is I will then begin taking out one whole month and once you complete a month and it will keep it and you don't want to infinitely keep these numbers the spreadsheet would go on forever i guess you could but you know really you want to be looking at a a, a, a period 12 months 24 months 36 months six months one you know whatever but for me i'm looking at a rolling 12 that's how i'm doing everything to do it and i'm figuring out what my gas cost is and i'm setting that aside so at the end of every day, if you're not setting aside, you should be setting that aside in an account somewhere. Set aside your get your car your car maintenance fund. Set aside your 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 gas. And if you tell me you can't do it, then you shouldn't be doing this, right? Because that is the basics of running a business, and you need to be running a business, and that needs to happen. And then at the very end, you, and of course, you set aside your taxes, your projected taxes. You should be projecting a tax amount every single shift even if you're not ending up paying taxes because expenses are coming out. And then you give yourself a refund when you get your tax bill every quarter. And you don't give yourself probably a full refund. I wouldn't say you would ever go outside of a quarter. So again, you always keep at least a qu last quarter's in and then you give yourself a refund from the pre from, from like two quarters ago. So, and then you, that money can go back in and then you can use that to reinvest, buy phones, buy phone cases, buy bags, um, and spend that money um, and then, you know, put it back into your business, which is what should be happening. Um, and if you're not doing that, right, if you're not doing these things, if you haven't set this up this way, these things will come at you and these things will hurt you hard. And that's what you've got to be taking into account when you're making these orders. But listen, getting into all of that, what I'm coming back to is the base pay issue is when people start talking about base pay and they start saying, man, they're doing this, they're doing, they're doing what we're letting them get away with. In other words, if you, the first thing is understanding how to value out an order. So you've got to understand what your cost is for each order. And then you've got to understand, all right, if I take a 450 order going two miles and it's costing me X amount for gas and X amount for that. And at the end of that order, I'm making $1. Is that enough for your time? No, the spread on that order is not, I mean, to me, it doesn't make any sense. You're not gonna be making any money. I mean, you're making, it's impossible to make money because the amount is too low, right? Regardless of what they might say, well, take, take five of them, put them together. Five of them will put them together. If your market in a saturated market, which is where every market will go to, because that's gonna be the goal of these apps is to saturate and, and fill these markets up. You're not gonna be working 100% of the time. And, you, and it's just not gonna happen. And if you're properly pricing out orders and properly looking for value, then you won't be working 100% of the time. You'll probably find yourself working anywhere from 50 to 85% of the time. That will be your range. And you should happily do that. Because if you're not getting value, don't run your car. And if at the end of the day, whatever you've brought home isn't enough to meet your bills and expenses, then it's time to find something else. It's time to properly put your gig business where it belongs in your life. Because if it's not able to sustain you, it would be like if you owned a convenience store and the convenience store at the end of the month wasn't paying all of your personal bills and you were losing money, you close your convenience store eventually because you'd lose your house and lose your car and lose everything around you because you're not able to cover your basic bills. And that doesn't even make sense to be involved with it. So if it's not doing that, it, that will tell you that. But you've got to be able to know this. You've got to be able to see this. You've got to be able to start pricing it. Now, what I believe, okay, is that if every driver started understanding how to organize their business and then started to see what they needed out of every order, they would find $10 an order is minimum for what you need. $10 an order, $10 to get your car moved. And some people are gonna say, that's crazy. There's no one. Well, that's crazy because we're letting the apps work us for less than that. And here's the thing, when it gets saturated, it works in two ways. 
You're going to have the people that's going to tell you it's over. It's impossible. No, it's not because they're, the market is at maximum. It's at maximum capacity. In my market, there's a wait list to get in, which means we as drivers, if we, the drivers that stay here and do it right, the drivers that meet protocol, meet the standard that the apps want you to meet and come out and start asking for what they need out of it. The goal of the algorithm is to put us to work to make money. DoorDash doesn't make money when we don't deliver. Grubhub doesn't make money when we don't deliver. So until we let our wheels move, we make sure we're getting value. Now, I'm not suggesting we're going to go back to decline now or no chip. I'm talking about decline with a purpose, okay? The problem with decline now was it made it sound like we were boobs and doofuses and idiots out here that was just declining everything as some form of protest. No. And and, 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 and that's pretty much where, where it went. And then we got bad press and we look foolish. The idea is decline with a purpose. Decline with a purpose. Okay. Um, Incoming order from the and if you're not declining with a purpose, Total mile 6.4. Current price $13.75. Price per mile $2. I got an interesting one. It's $13.75, six miles. I apologize, guys. I just need to take a look at this to decide what I want to do with it because it is it's a tough one. Um, all right. So let's just. I can literally see the restaurant. So that's going to take me 12 minutes to get to that residence. from here, allegedly. Okay, let's go back to it. Let's accept it. All right, guys, it's time to get to work. But anyways, hopefully you understand what I'm talking about in this video. It's a little bit of a lengthy video and I, I tend to get lengthy with my words, but I hope the point has come through, okay? Accept offers that make sense. Do what I just did right there live. I didn't plan this. I didn't know an order was coming through. Look at it, know your time, know what you have into it, Understand 1375 right there. What does 1375 mean to me, right? 1375 means that I have about 34 minutes to get that order done. And I'm looking at that knowing that I have 11 minutes from where I'm at. Golden Corral sits right over here. BJ sits right over there. 11 minutes from here to my final drop off on that order. So that tells me that I have to budget 11 minutes of travel time, probably add in an extra four minutes because I'll be stopping somewhere else which is along the way, I can see the path. So I've got 15 minutes of travel time. So my real assessment is, can I make, can I go make these pickups in 19 minutes? Can I go to Golden Corral in 19 minutes and pick up there and pick up a BJ's? And the answer to that, I hope is yes. And I made the assessment and I went ahead and accepted it. And we'll see if it pans out. And I'm gonna assess it. I think it's a doable order at that rate. It's an area that I believe I can get another order from. And we'll go from there. So let me get on this. I need to go pick these orders up, guys. I hope this video resonated with you. Um, and as always, guys, stay safe, stay profitable, and I'll talk to you soon.